Hi everyone, uh, I think it's time to start. So welcome to my talk. Um, if you are just here because of the title, fail, it's quite short. Um, it is about failure in bigger companies and open stack projects, mostly because of the companies are big. Um, so I would like to know if someone on you is currently evaluating or planning to evaluating open stack in a larger company. So. If you could raise your hand, that would be nice. Oh, it's a couple of, oh, perfect, cool. Uh, anyone else already uh, has um, some failed projects in big companies in the past? Like we tried OpenStack and didn't succeed? Oh, a few, okay. Maybe you will find the reasons again in this talk. Um, before we start, uh, I would like to introduce myself a little bit because not many people may know me. Um, my name is Sven Michels, German. The uh, company is called Sektor, uh, which is based in Germany, in Frankfurt. So that is something like the internet city in Germany because many of the big telcos uh, come together in Frankfurt. Um, we're doing IT business for now more than 15 years um, and OpenStack for more than three years right now. So uh, you may have seen me in past summits somewhere in all over the world. Oh, okay. Um, I'm counting on my widespread knowledge because I'm doing a lot of things. Um, so just to count a couple of things, I familiar with project management trainings, um, familiar with OSs trainings, uh, DevOps and stuff like that. And I'm also into network storage and stuff. So it's more like you can ask me mainly everything, which is good because in OpenStack all this come together. And in past uh, companies you had always like silos like these guys are doing network these guys are doing ops this guy guys are doing security um, and the problem was always like they need to talk each other and they don't like to talk to each other because means work um, so this comes together and um, i was used as a kind of proxy between teams in the past and now in openstack this is quite easy because all comes together and all has to work together um, and I'm happy to be one of the first OpenStack mentors. So in case you plan to be a, tr a mentee, you can contact me. Otherwise, if you're interested in the OpenStack mentor program, you can talk to me also. Um, yeah, so let's start with the talk. Oh, no, forget something. Because that one is uh, something I added uh, last minute uh, after I got the details of the survey. Um, I'm not sure if any one of you have participated in the survey. Oh, one, two. Two, three, oh, three. Okay, <laughs> this is one of the reasons I would like to talk about that one because there are a lot of people uh, contributing to that survey, but sadly only 3% from Germany, uh, which is from my side a little bit, um, yeah, depressing because uh, I know there's a lot of OpenStack ongoing in Germany, not that much as here probably or in other regions, but still more than 3% I would suggest. So if you are able to participate to those surveys, do it because it's important for the project, for OpenStack, and for all the people involved in that, because your feedback is used in future deployments and stuff like that. Um, and there's another thing I would like to add, because I have not this failure on my list anymore, because I thought it was already gone. Um, but there's an uh, interesting number in that sheet, and that is uh, the third from the below. It's uh, saving money, which is one of the uh, top business drivers uh, why people start OpenStack projects. And the survey showed that if it's important, and two-thirds of the people said it is important, then it's top one on this list. So whenever an OpenStack project starts, the top business driver for doing OpenStack is cost reduction. It is nice, and OpenStack probably will save costs, but putting that in front of everything else is probably yeah, something like doing it wrong. Because saving money is a wonderful outcome when you have an OpenStack project running and your company is adopting to it because it will save money in long part and in long short. But for looking at like in a half a year or a year, you will probably end up in noticing that it will only waste money because you need to educate your people, you need to uh, maybe buy new hardware and stuff like that. Um, 
and if you just focus on that one, you will probably have a bad time. So just try to stay away from that as top one for your reasons to go OpenStack, because OpenStack can do much, much more than just saving uh, money for you. OK, so why is it this talk about failure? Because I think everyone in the business know that failure is part of your way to success. You need to make mistakes to learn from that. You need to see where your borders are, which are your problems, and you probably don't know about them before. So failure is important. But I would suggest not to repeat history. In this time, history is not as like 30 years ago. It's more like three years ago. But what I have seen in companies is that they repeat the errors other ones did two years ago, three years ago, over and over again. Because they think, oh, we are different. We can do it the same way they did because they didn't succeed. That means not we will uh, not succeed. But most of the time, the failures are so generic that all will suffer from them. So you could just stay away from that, and you would probably succeed much quicker than when you stop by and hit all of those. So let's start with the first one on the list. Um, and the first one is the one which I was uh, called for like nearly 90% of the time. Companies have something like a virtualization platform or even not uh, virtualization. Uh, it's more like bare metal anymore. Uh, and they would like to move on. And they say, OK, we just replace the platform. So what they do is we have something. We replace that one by OpenStack. And then we will have our success. You can try that. I will not stop you from that, because then you need me again. But yeah, it probably won't work. No, it's not probably. It will not work. Um, because OpenStack is just more than just a drop-in replacement for your platforms, or maybe for your processes. That's another one uh, coming up later. Um, it is something which is quite complex. And you need a lot of homework to do to understand how OpenStack works and how you need to adopt to be able to use OpenStack in a way where it can really power you. Because most of the time, when you just migrate from one platform to OpenStack without changing anything, you will come to a point where you like needing upgrades. Everyone has heard about upgrades in OpenStack. Have someone did a successful upgrade in OpenStack on a running platform? Three. So, Many of them will come to the point where they try to upgrade OpenStack. And maybe it doesn't work, but they don't have a plan B for that. Because yeah, well, if you do OpenStack in a, from my perspective, correct way, you will use it as a cloud service. And then you should rely on that the cloud can fail at some stages. Um, and if your application is able to handle that one, you will have a good time. If you don't, then you probably will end up in a disaster. So if you start to plan OpenStack in your company, you need to adopt. So you need to change your processes. You need even to change your people a little, because they need to work different than they have before. And if you stay like you are today, and you just move on to OpenStack because that's, oh, everyone moves to OpenStack, so we go, then you will probably end up in losing stuff you already uh, have achieved in the past. because. It simply won't work on OpenStack like it was before. And if you don't adopt, you will end up in having nothing. So this is something people treat that often as easy. Because, hey, it's just another platform. Move on, and we will find ways to do it. But if you have ever used OpenStack for the first time, if you remember that one, it's not by just clicking a couple of links and it works. And there's a lot of documentation to read on. So plan ahead and start changing before moving to OpenStack. Number two, also something I heard often, it's like, why couldn't OpenStack be more like, I don't call names now, but you know plenty of virtualization platforms from different vendors, and they have something nice over here, and you would like to keep that one, and OpenStack doesn't have that one. And then you start asking people from the OpenStack Foundation or the developers, well, why is it different? Why isn't it like I used it like five years ago? It was so easy with the other product. And um, yeah, I, I don't like to adopt that one, because that was a good one. And yeah, but 
the reason you go to OpenStack is probably because OpenStack provides you with something your old product or your other product doesn't, su uh, su doesn't support. So um, there's reasons for that. And most of the reasons are good reasons. So in case of just bugging people, making OpenStack more like something rare or some other platforms, um, try to find the good points on OpenStack and adopt to them because those are the things that makes OpenStack powerful. Like um, you have all the APIs. I'm not aware about any other platform that had that much APIs and possibilities uh, from the beginning. So uh, this is something which is a, a good point on, on adopting because people are often complaining like, oh, there's no UI for doing so and so because that's a complex task to do. Yeah, but you have an API and you can work on that API and you can develop your own dashboard or connectors or whatever. And that will enable you to do much powerful things than you would be when you rely on just what the vendor provides to you. Number three, oh, we're getting uh, quick. So um, this is something I was uh, also hearing a lot from companies because they start OpenStack projects and they started behind the curtain because they don't want to be too, yeah, let's say people are interested in companies doing OpenStack and they won't see what they do with OpenStack and they would see the move to OpenStack. So they stay behind the curtain with OpenStack and start their own projects with a couple of people involved and everything works nice and then you come to problems. And when it comes to problems, the best way to do it is to ask people. Because um, whatever you think you're doing with OpenStack, I would bet that most of the stuff has already been done by other people. There's nothing special. Um, and in this time, people start to hiding and trying to solve them by themselves. And they waste a lot of time and people by fixing stuff other ones already have solved. And this is something which I learned the hard way on OpenStack summits. Because uh, when you come first to a summit and you start noticing that you can talk actually to people, which is great, you will probably notice that you can also talk to people working in big companies. There was talks by PayPal, for example, and they were happily to share their experience with all the other guys. So I would count PayPal as a big company and they probably do stuff which is confidential in some ways, but at least what, what's on OpenStack side, they are happily to share their experience. And so if you ever think about doing your OpenStack projects behind the curtains, you can't do that, it's no problem. Um, but Think about that you probably will end up in doing all the work twice or even more times uh, to fix your stuff instead of just going to a summit, a meetup, something like that, talk to the people and get some feedback, maybe get the right pointers to fix your problems or issues, or even you think about doing something very big with OpenStack. Nobody has done this before because you don't find it on the internet. And then you end up in coming to a summit and three other companies just did the same. So. If you work openly with OpenStack, it's probably, in my point of view, the best way to do it because then you can easily adapt to the uh, upstream releases, you can easily adapt to new changes on all the projects, and you can easily integrate other stuff in your OpenStack projects. So try to exchange with others, try to yeah, integrate other ones in your thinking and, and uh, projects because that one, is, is really a key driver in all this business. If you take a look how many companies do quick releases and stuff, OpenStack still hurts some big companies with their six month release cycle because they say, oh, six month release cycle, that's ridiculous. We can't do that because we usually do something like a year, maybe more. Um, if you stay the same way for next two years, you will probably end up in running OpenStack in, an, in a version which is not only not supported anymore, which is more counted like a dinosaur and doesn't provide anything you need today. So try to move in the same speed like OpenStack does, or at least try to uh, adjust your speed a little bit more than just a couple of years. Number four. Also a thing uh, which is quite common, uh, people think that if you run your product or something like that on OpenStack instead of traditional hosting platforms, it will be a success because you can do all the fancy OpenStack stuff. 
Yes, in some cases this might be correct, but most of the time it's not only about the platform you use. And OpenStack is, is a step to your success, but probably not the one bringing you up to the top of your uh, path to success. So um, when you plan about running something on OpenStack, because that one is the only problem you have, good on you. But most of the time you will see that if you move on to OpenStack, they will raise new problems, new issues, and new possibilities maybe, which makes you even, be, which enables you even to be uh, more successful with your application, with your platforms, with whatever you plan to use with OpenStack. So don't rely on just OpenStack. OpenStack is just part of your solution. Never ever is OpenStack the only solution. And um, if you say it, but company number X did it the same way and they were successful, that might be correct, but it's company X, not yours. So um, don't just think that success from other ones can be copied over to your companies or copied over to your projects because um, you don't see the whole effort behind each project or platform and you don't see what's, what happened on the way to success from them. So you probably will only see the top of their success. And the rest is also very important. And if you skip those parts, you will have a hard time later on. So let's come to number five. Um, this is something widespread because um, OpenStack is often seen as an enabler. Uh, so if you have traditional Developing, uh, developing teams in your company, they always often complain about, oh, we would like having some self-service platform to be enabled to do DevOps stuff. DevOps is something everyone likes today, if you don't listen to Gartner. Um, but an OpenStack platform is not the only uh, thing you need to be able to do DevOps or agile development or something like that because this is only the platform. Um, and a platform itself basically does nothing for you. It just gives you the right starting point. So if you rely on OpenStack as an enabler, that's okay. But the enabling itself is done by you or more important, your people. So if you wanna make sure that OpenStack enables you to do something, then make sure that the company is also changing or adopting, depending on what plans you have. Um, because this one is, yeah, it's, it's like um, if you start a new project and you do it the same way and you, you have seen in the past that some stuff doesn't work, like you don't get releases quickly or you don't get the feedback from the customer, just replacing your old stuff by OpenStack or an OpenStack enabled platform probably won't change anything of those problems. You can just maybe develop quicker, but if you don't get the feedback, what is the profit of it? And something which is also very important, um, if you work with people in your company, and I bet you do so, don't assume your people are stupid. If you assume your people are stupid, then ask yourself first why you hired them. And secondly, if you tell them like, we go DevOps, we merge teams, everyone will work like before, just better and everything, everything will work smoother and everything will be nice. Uh, I don't know anyone who is believing in that bullshit. Sorry, yeah, it is just bullshit because what is behind that is like, oh, we have 30 people working together now, then we have 60. And then they count on numbers. We don't need 60 people doing that work. 30 is enough, maybe even less because we do more together and we work more efficient. And people will notice this type of changes. It's not about providing them a better working environment. It's a company. Companies look on numbers and successes. And so companies are moving on in this, in this direction to shape their own uh, employee count a little bit. And if people notice that one, they will stop working like you would expect it to do. They will not like this DevOps stuff anymore. They will try probably to sabotage your DevOps stuff because they know what it will end up with, maybe in another company. So if you think your people are stupid, 
they probably aren't and hopefully they aren't and it will not work that way because you will have a lot of people working against you in your own company this is not only bad this is the worst you can have so um, yeah what are possible steps to success in this case because uh, we heard now what what's probably not working but you will be hopefully hearing what is working so be open-minded is just like OpenStack just as a platform or just as a yeah we just run a bunch of instances on it it's nice uh, to to think about it but there's much much more to do you can do much more than just like running instances on it you can run SDNs with it uh, you can run like services on demand on it in an, in a an scale and in an, in a in a way that it was not possible before and if you start thinking about what is possible with OpenStack, you will probably end up in getting new ideas or new projects, new applications, whatever you can imagine, to run into your own company instead of just buying something from Amazon maybe. Um, communication and exchange is also very important because um, this is where all the knowledge comes from. Uh, it may be that you know people already from the foundation or maybe not, or from other projects or other companies. And at least for the summits here in, in the OpenStack area, I have never seen that a company denies on exchanging with some other company, even if they are working on the same uh, platforms, issues, whatever. Um, normally, you will find nice people over here to exchange with them. And I would recommend to do so because it's the best thing. You, you, you come together with like people from 60 other countries and from hundreds of companies. Why not using those four or five days to exchange to those people? It is quicker and better than whatever you can do otherwise. No email, no, no phone call will be ever that good like meeting people in person over here. So go to summits. If you have projects in your companies, enable people to go to the summits. Um, this is key important. I was talking to someone yesterday. Uh, they started an open project a couple of weeks ago, not much more than a, than a month, and they sent up two people over here because they so see it's important to meet other people to exchange. Um, I have seen companies, they denied people to go here, <coughs> not here in particular, but to summits, uh, because it's just a waste of time. It's one week conference, nobody needs that. You can look up all the stuff on YouTube. Yes, you can, but you will not be able to communicate on YouTube. You can probably post comments, but most of the people won't read them, at least not the ones you want to reach. So enable your people to go to the summits. Sec second thing is we have mailing lists for OpenStack projects. They are also very useful because you have a lot of interesting and uh, intelligent people on those lists. And a mailing list is, is still old-fashioned, but it works. We have archives, you can look up and on, on, on Google and stuff. You will find answers over there and you will get answers over there. So open communication is the key to success in my eyes. Next thing is what I personally like is to go to meetups. I'm not sure how many meetups you have here around the area or in your home cities, but at least in Germany we have a couple of them and I can say at least the ones I have attended to, they are useful and nice because you met a lot of uh, other people interested in this project and working in this area, even from big companies again. Um, and they are a little bit smaller than a conference like that where you have seven and a half thousand people, where probably it's hard to get to the right ones. But if you meet local people, that's also a good starting point to exchange, to grow your own community, to grow your own knowledge. And in case everything else fails, you can still talk to the foundation. The foundation is nothing like a, a, and another big company, you may not talk to them. Uh, they are happy to answer your questions. They can link you to other ones working in the same area. They can link you to the developers. They can link you to companies working with the same issues and stuff like that. So don't forget about the foundation. That's one of the best things we can have in OpenStack. Other point is to ask vendors. Vendors are usually around here, like in the marketplace. And uh, of course, they want to make business. Everyone wants to make business. But um, they, they are also happy to help you with your projects. 
Um, I have worked in the past with a lot of vendors, and most of them are here right now. And I know they are nice people. I can promise that. Um, they will help you with your projects. They will help you with support. They will help you with getting in contact with developers on their side. So if you have issues, they can probably solve that. And uh, one thing I have seen in the past was like, uh, we requested something and it took two weeks to get a full-blown update for a solution from a vendor. And two weeks for an open stack release is amazing. So um, don't think there's just sales guys wanting your money. There are nice people behind them and they are happy to help you. And of course you can ask experts. Uh, some of them are working around here. Um, and if you don't find one, you can ask me because I'm most of the time nice. And I'm also happy to help you and to connect you to other ones. Um, because I, I personally like the philosophy behind OpenStack and the way it works. And I would love to see this project ongoing for a lot of more years maybe even better than it is today. Um, so get support from experts because that's the easiest way to get knowledge into your company. Um, I mean, growing knowledge in your company is probably hard, but at least what OpenStack provides you with all the documentation, it's a little bit easier to do so than with other projects I have been involved with because it's already there. You have all the documentation and you have all the stuff you need so you can do your own research. And with the right pointers, you will quickly be able to do stuff you probably never have imagined before. And when you are successful with your OpenStack project and you are able to do, please contribute. Because many stuff is, yeah, just keep into the lockers because they say, oh, this is not important. That's probably not right. Because as I said in one of the uh, failures before, Many people work on the same issues. And if you keep your stuff behind the curtain, nobody will profit from it. And it, profit means not probably money, but you get recognized. And people which get recognized usually get also help. So put it on your list in your OpenStack projects to plan ahead for contribution to OpenStack. It must not be pr uh, code in some way. It could also be like you fix documentation. People from the documentation team are always happy to get uh, fixes for their own documentation. Or if you have ideas, you can still just support the, communica uh, the community with your ideas because some people will probably adopt them and make them possible for you. So any questions and comments? And please, no eggs or tomatoes to me. But if you have cookies, it's OK. I don't see that much because the lights are so bright. But I don't see anyone having comments and questions. So any, no? OK, so I did any, anything wrong? No? OK. <laughs> one final quote. This is my personal one, because I like to tell people uh, technical stuff in the way they probably will understand it. and transfer to other ones because people just, if you talk about clouds, people still look at the sky and say, this will store my data. No. Um, if you go with OpenStack and think about another uh, as a car, um, think about OpenStack as an electrical car one, not the traditional ones you have with your gas in it. It's a new car with new possibilities, but it will only be your new car if you're needs and habits fit to that car. It's like if you start going on a trip and you fill up your gas tank like two minutes before, you will have a bad time doing that with the electrical car one because in two minutes you will probably not even charge a person. So you need to change your habits and you need to be, uh, you have to need, oh, sorry, you need to have the right needs to fit to that car. So if you go open stack, check first if that one is the right way to do it and if you see issues, take a research about the issues. You probably can solve them with additional projects or additional vendors um, before you start moving on. Because otherwise, as said, you will probably end up with a bad time. So thanks. If you have any questions afterwards, you can contact me by email or on Twitter. Or if you meet me somewhere around this area, just talk to me. I'm happy to help, talk, and have a good time over here. 
so that's it. Now you can upload again.